Hey YouTube, it's Tams the Wicked Witch. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're going to do a little bit of folklore and history today. Something a little bit different on the channel. I thought we'd talk about Halloween. And um, I've got a few notes, so you'll have to forgive me because I can't remember all this. Um, I'm really interested in folklore, if you didn't know. Um, find it really interesting. And yeah, I uh, thought I'd share a little bit with you and uh, yeah, get a little bit uh, into the spooky atmosphere. I have my cool flashing candle in the background. Hope it's not blinding you um, and still got the pineapple hair. So apologies for that. So Halloween. Everybody associates Halloween with dressing up and trick or treat and the kids coming around for sweets. And this is not something that was invented in America and brought over. This in fact comes from Ireland, England, Scotland, the Celts. Um, it's a it's a Celtic um, holiday, the Celtic holiday of Samhain, which is spelt Samhain, um, as I'm sure you all know. Um, pagans and witches all over the world um, celebrate Samhain on the 31st of October and they enjoy Halloween as well. So it's like a double whammy. Um, Celts would dress up and um, black out their faces. Um, you know, what they used back in the 15th and 16th century, I do not know. Um, but they would have blacked out their faces. They would have dressed up. And this was to trick evil spirits and to trick, like, the bad spirits away um, that they believed were roaming the earth. Um, and the idea was to trick them away before All Saints Day, which, of course, is November 1st. Um by the 11th century, um, the church, the Christian church, had tr kind of changed the tradition into souling. And souling, I think, is where your trick or treat kind of is adapted from. So souling, children would dress up, they would go door to door, they would ask for soul cakes in exchange for praying for their souls or souls of friends or souls of their family or relatives. Um, they would go dressed as angels um, or saints or demons, you know, like bad spirits and demons. And that's what they dress up as. Um, soul cakes are really sweet and um, they would have like a cross on the top of the cake. Um, probably a little bit like or cross buns type cross. Um, and they would be eaten um, and they were eaten to represent a soul being freed from purgatory. Okay, so that is from the 11th century onwards. So um, by the 19th century, Solin, um, Solin was kind of um, gone. That's not what they were calling it anymore. And the children would go around asking for, again, probably cakes, not so much sweets, but um, in return for poetry or a song or a dance or kind of that kind of thing. They would ask for fruit um, and not so much sweets, I don't think. I don't really know what this kind of things they had then, but yeah, it was that kind of thing. And then obviously the first phrase in America, trick or treat, was used in 1927. Okay, so I just read that off of there because... Um, I, you know, can't remember all that stuff. So, yeah. So, this is, like, really, really old, okay? So, going back to... Let's go back to Ireland in perhaps the 12th or 13th century, maybe a little bit later, but let's go back to Ireland when the kids were dressing up as the bad evil spirits to kind of scare them away. They really did believe in the bad evil spirits. And we'd got Samhain on the 31st of October and the spirits had to be scared away by, you know, the next day. Um, on the 1st of November, um, the kids would have had jack-o'-lanterns made from turnips and probably potatoes. They would not have had pumpkins. Um, I think pumpkins was, pumpkins came a lot later. We're going to go 19th, early 19th century. I don't think it was before that. I would have to look that up. I didn't think to look that up actually, but it was actually turnips and probably rotten, rotten like what nobody could eat they would not have wasted food you got to remember these people were were hard up and everything had to grow and if they had bad bad weather um, they wouldn't have wasted anything carving things out so they used to put little candles into turnips and carry them um, these were things that they would ward off you know they would ward off spirits um, in Celtic Ireland um, going back in the 14 and 1500s and maybe before um, they would put sacks over the children's heads and make them look as grotesque as possible so that when the demon spirits came out, they wouldn't try and take them off. 
Um, and again, this is where the fancy dress for trick or treat comes from. So this is kind of Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales. This is not just from America. And the reason it would have gone over to America is because the first settlers would have come over on boats. And I, they would have been Irish. They would have been English. They could have been Scottish, you know, rah, rah, rah. And from other, you know, immigrants. And that's where it's come from. So this is not an American custom as such. They have adapted it, made it their own. Obviously, they have the best shops and the best stuff over there. England, we're so far behind, but we are getting there. It's better than has been. Um, and it's it's a great time and it's fun and, you know, it's not just fun for the kids. The adults love it as well. But it goes back so far. Um, so um, we we have this we have this knowledge that it was all created in, um, you know, in America. And it's but it's actually it's ancient. It's ancient old. So the reason that souling came about um so that was from the 11th century when the church got involved. So when the Christian got Christianized from the first, you know, from before when they was um, when they were knocking doors for the, um, you know, just asking for, you know, doing a song and dressing up to ward off spirit. Then the Christian, the Christian church was involved and um, they were doing the soul in and getting the soul cakes. That was a time when they were trying to get rid of paganism. They didn't want paganism. Everything had to be Christian. And they were trying to get rid of paganism. And, you know, obviously in, in, in Ireland, which was, um, you know, the pagans were, were run out of Ireland, as you know. I'm sure we won't, don't need to go into St. Patrick and um, that story. It wasn't snakes that were driven from Ireland. It was obviously the pagans. Um, the Christians were doing everything they could to just remove every single pagan holiday. Um, and the Sa Samhain is a, is a cross-quarter festival. Um, you know, it's one of the big festivals in pagan, in, in pagan, in pagan law. Um, and it had to be changed, you know, um, just like Yule, uh, you know, when, when we get to the 21st of December onwards, we've got Yule. Um, and they did the same there. That to suddenly pop up with Christmas Day um, because they couldn't have the, the, the pagans having anything. So. Of course, paganism is strong and it's stayed strong. And many of us today are celebrating the, um, the festivities of our eight Sabbaths around the um, pagan wheel of the year. And um, Samhain is one of them, obviously Yule being the last one of the year. Um, and Samhain is probably the most, for me, I love it. It's so exciting. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Halloween and all this. I collect all the things, as you know. But Samhain is my favourite um, to celebrate. Um, it's the it's the time when the bow between the two worlds is thin um, and you can contact spirit, ancestors. It's a time to celebrate those who have died, whether it's fa like family, whether it's human pets, whatever. Um, you can contact, you know, your ancestors. For witches, it's a time to celebrate um, ancestors as in ancestors of witches you know whether you've got actual ancestors all witches are your ancestors if you're a witch so um it's it's a very magical time it's a very amazing time for any kind of seances and tarot and any kind of um divination um brilliant time for anything like that so um yeah it's an exciting it's an exciting holiday um, in other cultures, they set out places at the dinner table for those who have died. Um, that's quite popular in several cultures. Some dig up dig up the bodies and sit them at the table um, and burn a lot of incense to get rid of the smell and then put them back again. Um, yeah, people do that actually. Even in England, they don't dig up the bodies. I mean, they, they set a place like at the table um, or they'll leave out something that that person really liked at their dinner table. Um to be honest now most people do the halloween they don't really um there isn't really much more is there on halloween I, I know in england unless you're pagan um it's kind of just the whole trick or treat and the kids have got loads of sweets and the mum and dad drag the kids around knocking on all the doors and then the older kids are all a nuisance and it is such a shame a lot of it has been lost and a lot of people don't know they don't know the history um we go back to times when um in ireland um and the kids would be dressed up as something grotesque. And there are references to the goddess Morrigan being mentioned as one of the demon goddesses. She would come out of the hole in the ground. Um, and um, I can't remember the name. 
I can't remember the name of the place, um, which I really should have looked up before I did this. Um, never mind. And she, this is like a great big cave, and you can go in and con you know this is. How can I not know this? <laughs> can't think now. I, this always happens to me on camera. I lose track and can't think what I'm saying. Anyway, she would come out and the kids would all be dressed, um, eat, you know, ugly and grotesque. So the demon goddesses and gods of the underworld wouldn't take them away. And this was all, again, sa Samhain tradition and things that led up to Samhain or on the eve, you know. Um, and that is where obviously dressing up has come from. Your pumpkins has come from the turnips. They would walk around probably because they needed to see where they were going. They'd have little candles in them. Also, you know, they would hang them around to prevent evil. Um, they, in, in Ireland and England and Scotland, Celtic times, 11th century before 11th century. Um, if you've ever, well, if you know, if you watch my channel, you know I'm a massive fan of the band Devil Driver. Um, they're they're really they're a death metal band, a uh, melodic death metal band. Um, but Devil Driver, a, a Devil Driver is a set of bells that was hung outside to to scare away demonic or evil spirit or the devil. Um, it would have been Christianized with the word devil because you've got to remember um, the pagans, early pagans um, wouldn't. Um, my phone's ringing. Sorry early um early uh earlier than what was i saying oh, fuck, i can't remember what i was saying um let's pause oh yeah sorry <laughs> bloody phone he's doing it again right so yeah devil driver um obviously the it was again the christianized um the word devil is a, it's a christian concept so bef you know it was never associated with any kind of devil or anything like that but obviously evil spirits might not have been called that they're probably called saying else um but things that were evil perhaps a bit demonic wouldn't have used that word probably either but scaring away the bad um and that was where that the, the devil driver is a is a set of is a set of bells honestly this is a set of bloody bells hang on a minute Sorry about that. So then the postman came and that was a whole nother load of the doorbell going off and um, the phone going off telling me that there was somebody in the yard. So, um, yeah, sorry about that. So, yeah, going back to the devil driver, um, a set of bells hung on the door of your home um, to, um, you know, and wind chimes. They were they were to ward off spirit and that's what they were for. So the devil driver, very, very popular in other countries. Um, Eastern European countries um, they may have had slightly different wording for it but yeah that's where Devil Driver the band got its name <laughs> um, a Devil Driver wards away wards off evil spirits and uh, you know scares off the devil so again it would have been Christianized with the devil wording and dem demonic and all that kind of stuff but prior prior to that old 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 you would have hung things up that rattled and shook and to scare off spirit or bad 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 juju if you will <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's where wind chimes come from um, and things like that. So any kind of bells. So um, obviously I've got loads of wind chimes and people do have them today and they're just magical to me. They're not to scare anything away, um, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, there's so many things that change over the years. So this has got quite a long video. I hope this is useful to some of you. Um, sorry if I pronounced anything wrong and I cannot remember the cave where Morrigan comes out of. And I can't believe that I can't remember that. So I should really go and look that up. And I'm going to come back in a sec because, you know, how awful. Um, she's... Oh, hang on a sec. Okay, so I'm going to butcher. I apologise if anyone Irish is watching this. I'm going to butcher your words, okay? So in Ireland, um, they have what they call the Gate to Hell. And it is a cave um, set in the hillside. Um, I think the hillside where it's set is pronounced Rath. Kurachan, but Morrigan's cave is Rathcrohan. Rathcrohan. Uh, it's spelled R A T H C R O G H A N, and um, that is where Morrigan is sent. Is said to come, and other, and not just Morrigan, but other, you know, forces are set to come out. Mor Morrigan's actually looked at as a demon, um, a real dark de demonic goddess. Obviously, that's not what us, um, some of us pagans believe, who work with her. Although she is um, dark, <laughs> but you know, um, yeah. So anyway, I butchered a few words. You know, it wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't. Um, yeah, I hope this was interesting to you. Uh, if you've got any information, let me know below. Um, 
I do like a bit of folklore. It's interesting. Yeah, hope you like the video. I'll see you all soon. Have a good weekend. Ta-da.